Protein Synthesis by kscience.com. This here is inside the nucleus of the cell. This here is the cytoplasm. What I'm drawing here is double-stranded DNA that is inside the nucleus of the cell. The first stage of protein synthesis is transcription. Transcription. This is where DNA is transcribed to mRNA. An enzyme called RNA polymerase is going to bind the DNA. An enzyme called RNA polymerase is going to bind the DNA. So what the RNA polymerase does is it unzips the DNA. So now the DNA's bases are exposed. So you can see here that the bases of the DNA are exposed by the enzyme RNA polymerase. So RNA polymerase is then going to complementary base pair mRNA bases to the DNA to make an mRNA molecule. So this part of the DNA reads TACG. That means that the mRNA bases that are going to complementary base pair are going to be C, G, U, and A. There is no T in mRNA. T is replaced by U, so U binds A. So U complementary base pairs with A. The RNA polymerase enzyme moves along the DNA and unzips the double helix. The RNA polymerase enzyme moves along the DNA. So I've now drawn the exposed DNA bases. And this here is the RNA polymerase enzyme. This part of the mRNA was made in the image above. And it's single-stranded. This mRNA is single-stranded. And this reads CGUA. Remember, there is no T thiamine in RNA molecules. T is replaced by U. So A binds the T, U, not T, binds the A, G binds the C, U binds the A, A binds the T, A binds the T, G binds the C, and C binds the G. And the RNA polymerase then moves down the DNA double helix, unzipping it and making the mRNA molecule longer, transcribing the DNA to mRNA. The RNA polymerase is going to transcribe the DNA which is double-stranded to a single-stranded mRNA molecule. And this here is the product of transcription, a single-stranded mRNA, which is formed inside the nucleus. So the mRNA stands for messenger RNA. Messenger RNA. And this messenger RNA, mRNA, is now transported from the nucleus into the cytoplasm, where the second stage of protein synthesis can take place. This is called translation. Translation. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. And this messenger RNA, mRNA, is now transported from the nucleus into the cytoplasm, where the second stage of protein synthesis can take place. This is called translation. Translation. So this here is a single-stranded mRNA, which is now going to be used to form a polypeptide chain of amino acids. mRNA binds to a ribosome. A ribosome is the site of protein synthesis. So what I'm drawing here is the molecule that transports amino acids to the ribosome. And this carrier molecule is called transfer RNA, tRNA. So as you can see here, the mRNA code is AUG, which means that the carrier molecule's triplet code must read UAC. So now this carrier molecule binds the mRNA. So now this carrier molecule binds the mRNA. This is another carrier molecule called tRNA. So as you can see, the mRNA triplet code is CAU, which means that this carrier molecule called tRNA must have a complementary base code of GUA. So this carrier molecule now binds the mRNA in the ribosome. And this carrier molecule 
is then going to transfer its amino acid to the amino acid on the other carrier molecule called tRNA. This is now forming a polypeptide chain. And this carrier molecule is going to leave the ribosome. The ribosome is then going to move along the mRNA. The ribosome is then going to move along the mRNA. And this carrier molecule is going to leave the ribosome. And as you can see here, it doesn't have an amino acid attached to it because it's transferred its amino acid to the other tRNA carrier molecule. And this carrier tRNA molecule, the green one, and this carrier tRNA molecule, the green one, has two amino acids attached to it. This is now forming a polypeptide chain, a chain of amino acids. So this carrier molecule, known as tRNA, is then going to bind the mRNA because the triplet code on the mRNA is complementary to the triplet code in the tRNA, so it binds it. And this tRNA carrier molecule is then going to transfer its two amino acids to the adjacent tRNA carrier molecule's amino acid. And once it's transferred its amino acids, it's going to leave the ribosome. So the ribosome now moves along the mRNA. This tRNA carrier molecule has three amino acids attached. It's going to be another tRNA carrier molecule that's now going to bind the mRNA. But that's only because the tRNA carrier molecule without an amino acid will leave the ribosome. So now the blue carrier molecule called tRNA has a triplet code, which is UCG. This is going to base pair with AGC on the mRNA, bringing the correct amino acid to the ribosome. So now this tRNA carrier molecule can bind the mRNA in the ribosome and cause the amino acid chain to increase in length. So the chain of amino acids that we formed in this example is four amino acids long. We call this a polypeptide chain, a chain of amino acids. But a polypeptide chain isn't a functional protein. The polypeptide chain must first fold to form a protein, and that protein will have a function. So the polypeptide chain folds into a protein. So this is the process of how mRNA is translated into amino acids, which then join together to form a polypeptide chain. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Press pause to practice using those key words. The answers will follow. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. And if you're stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes.